hey everyone this is asia welcome back to my youtube channel so today i just wanted to go over a quick vlog travel vlog of some time i spent in la a couple weeks ago so of course this isn't the true full-on travel vlog ex experience because i'm not there anymore um when i was before i left i forgot my tripod and you know i kind of realized that you know i don't really like to record or you know casually just constantly on my phone when i'm out traveling i kind of like to just absorb like just the natural experience and then you know of course here talk about it later so let's get into the video so i just want to cover up some kind of just clear up some things before you travel to la especially if this might be your first time just from my experience these are things that I would have liked to have been, you know, told. And before I went, I did look on YouTube at videos, things that I already knew, things that I wasn't too fully aware on. But luckily, while I was there, I did not. I did travel alone, but I had a friend that lived in L.A. So he kind of like showed me the ropes and gave me like just some advice and showed me where to go. And we traveled together. So I had an amazing time out there with my friend. I miss him. So anyway, let's get into the video. So at first, I just want to go over just some things in L.A. or before you get here and when you land. So depending on what airport you go to, the most popular one is LAX. And when I got off the uh, airplane, uh, it wasn't as packed as I thought it was. It was pretty packed and it was pretty populated. And they're actually working on LAX. So it is kind of confusing. It's just like this huge circle just like, you know, pretty much any airport. But yeah, they were working on some construction in LAX. And when you get, when you land, depending on if you're renting a car or you're using uh, ride sharing services like Lyft or Uber, um, they have this shuttle called the LA exit that basically takes you from the airport and takes you to this parking lot where those services are provided. So that's what I did because, you know, I ain't got money like that, like that. And I kind of wanted to just have like the full tourist experience. So I was just like, you know what? I'm a Uber everywhere. But we're going to get into that. Y'all be careful of them Ubers because they are expensive out there. And not only are they expensive, but during like those. And I have a car back here at home. So I haven't used Uber in like two years since then, since Cali. So man, them Uber prices, once they start surging, especially around LAX. So maybe that's something that uh, you guys should take into consideration when traveling there. Maybe, you know, having your reservation or where your events are around LAX might not be the best idea, especially since, you know, it's gonna be a high traffic volume and the surges and the prices, they gonna go up. It's going to be hard to find an Uber. It's going to take your Uber a long time to probably get to you because just being around LAX and around the counties there are just, it's really busy. And LA in itself, and in itself is huge. But we also will get into that. So, yeah, so taking to consideration how you're going to travel around LA, um, again, so when you run into the Ubers or Lyfts, take those prices into consideration. And also if you're going to rent a car, you know, think about the price, what kind of car you want, because what I've noticed walking around in LA is that nobody walks in LA. Like everybody has a car, everything is far away. Everything is stretched out. Everything takes a long time to get there. And that's what kind of sucks about LA. Like the traffic kind of sucked. Like honestly, how LA is, it's a pain in the ass to get where you're going, but when you get to where you're going is when you're really gonna enjoy yourself and have a good time. But being stuck in traffic, paying gas or tickets or whatever, that stuff is painful. Also take into consideration, you know, parking when you have a, if you rent a car, uh, also take into consideration gas, which is very expensive out there. I wish I actually took a picture of the gas. Uh, how much the gas was out there. So take into consideration gas, 
take into consideration of your mileage because that's also important depending on what car you uh, are renting and if there's a limit and also of course take into consideration of where you're going to go as far as miles as well so definitely think about transportation that's a huge thing when you're going to LA if you're going to uber it be ready to pay them prices and if you're ready to uh, rent a car be also ready to pay those prices it's up to you whichever works for you public transportation if you're that person that's gonna be brave enough to catch public transportation in LA uh, in LA County good luck to you it so before we get into the sightseeing I just want to give you guys an example so me and my friend the last day I was in LA well the last night I was there we went to the Griffith Observatory which I'll talk about later so so I was staying around like Hawthorne and not too far from LAX. So let's say to get from LAX to go downtown LA. So it's about a 30 something minute car ride, depending on the traffic on the bus, public transportation, the Metro, da, 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 da the shuttle to get up to the observatory that took us about three hours. So if you're going to catch public transportation, you have to think about because I mean, it's pretty once you get the tap card, I guess it's OK. So price wise, it's pretty much not as expensive, no different from any other city like, you know, D.C. is pretty expensive to get around. But L.A., I mean, you just the day pass was like, what, nine dollars? No, seven dollars. I don't remember. But definitely consider the transportation and, you know. If you want to ride in luxury, ride in luxury. If you want to ride affordable, ride affordable and catch the bus. But that time you're going to be stuck in traffic, especially if you need to get to where you need to be, especially when you're vacation, where you don't really want to waste a lot of time. Okay, so now that I got the transportation thing out of the way, let's talk about the pros. So the pros were the weather. The weather there is undefeated. Like I've been out west I've been to Arizona I went to Phoenix like th that weather was well, when I went there it was like the springtime but it gets really really hot in Phoenix and pretty much over here on the east coast you know I've been to a bunch of states I've been to Florida but man that LA weather it's beautiful all year round it seems like and I feel like it's really no bad time or season to go in LA like the weather is just beautiful it's not hot you're not really sweating you know a lot of people out there they dress in like shorts and wear like a sweater or a jacket and I understand why because you can kind of be chill cool and a little warm at the same time so the weather out there in the sky like you know California is on this like hill and these mountains you know Beverly Hills so it's just like it seems like you're more closer to the skyline and you know the views it's beautiful out there so along with the weather, I want to talk about the vibes and the aesthetics of L.A. It's very beautiful out there, you know, with some very beautiful parts. And, you know, the I ran into like a lot of headquarters out there. Like I was blown away when I seen like the L.A. Times. I was like, wow, like, you know, I went to school for writing and journalism. So that was like a big deal for me. I seen the uh, Mattel headquarters um staples center so you see a lot of big things out there and i'll also talk about more of the attractions uh in a later in the video but yeah and along with the vibes are the the various amounts of beaches around and around la so the vibe of just you know say if you don't have a lot of money say if you don't want to spend money and go to clubs like and you know during covid i don't know if that was even possible but <laughs> the beaches are definitely where it's at they were very nice it felt good to just have that sand and you know the people when i was out at one of the beaches i went to manhattan beach and you know there were people playing volleyball it was really just kind of like a spring break vibe out there like 24 7. it's really cool and so guys as i've said i'm about to get into you know the itinerary and what i did out there but i just want to talk about the activities guys please do not expect to travel all of LA or get to see everything during your travel or your trip, um, depending on how long you're maybe out there. 
but I was only out there for maybe about four days. So I didn't get to see everything that I wanted to see, of course, because yeah, LA is just really, really spread out. I also learned quite a few things while I was out there. It's this beach called Bruce's Beach that's located around and in Manhattan Beach. And Bruce's Beach was owned by a black man named Charles Bruce. And he owned this beach as, you know, kind of like a black resort where black people could travel to and have a good time because during the time, of course, you know, segregation was still in place. And even today, you know, LA County and certain places in LA, you know, also deal with, you know, race tensions as, you know, everywhere else. But specifically Bruce's Beach, it was taken away from the owners by LA County and the Manhattan uh, municipals or what have you. So they took the beach away and just recently they actually were like, hey, you know, we're wanna, we wanna right our wrongs. We're gonna give the beach back, you know, into the family's name. So that was pretty interesting to learn. And I also went to the Santa Monica Pier. So the Santa Monica Pier, boy, it was crowded. Um, there were a lot of vendors. Very beautiful out there, though. Um, you know, it looks just like Grand Theft Auto. It looks just like San Andreas. Uh, and, well, Los Santos. So, <laughs> And, and kind of like when I had landed, I was like, I was feeling like Carl Johnson. I was feeling like CJ the whole time, like... When I was out there, I was like, wow, like it really does look like the video game, but they really had me fooled though, because it's just like the way that map was set up, they really had you thinking you could go to San Fierro, San, Fr San Francisco, you could go to Los Venturas, Las Vegas in what the span of like 20 minutes. I mean, of course, games are not, you know, far, like somewhat far from reality, of course, but it's just like that game really had me fooled, but I'm also a dumbass, so that also counts. But yeah, I went to Santa Monica Pier. It looked just like how it looks in, you know, movies and games and, you know, other media. So it was really nice to see up close and in person. And, you know, like I said, it was really crowded. A lot of vendors. I got in the lote. That was good. So yeah, and around um, Santa Monica in that area, cause that's not considered um, Los Angeles, that's LA County. So yeah, it was really beautiful out there. A lot of diverse groups of people. Um, and you know, they had like shopping strips and malls. I didn't really buy anything, but it was very nice to see, very nice sights. Yeah, and apparently like it's a bunch of like videos on YouTube of people like jumping into the uh, pier. I meant jumping into the water and during this time I was actually kind of reluctant to go to the water and go into the beaches because at the time of my travel there was this uh, sewage thing that was going on a lot of like gallons of sewage just kind of like poured into the beaches along like you know the LA coast so I was a little scared about that another thing on my list of itinerary was on my last day the last night before I left was we went to the Griffith observatory so remember previously i told y'all it took us like three hours on the bus to get there so when we got there it was like it was pretty much dark but luckily my night mode kind of got everything and i got some some pretty decent pictures but yeah the griffith observatory was beautiful guys so i definitely recommend that uh you get like a when you get there it kind of looks like it, it it looks really beautiful there and when you go inside it's basically like this um you know museum uh of the solar system it's a telescope and when you go outside and on the sides you can see all of la all the city just stretched out and you can also see like behind the uh observatory is the hollywood sign i wasn't really too much like too woed about it because i see it you know all the time on TV. So that's definitely a must go to for me, in my opinion. Um, but of course there were plenty of things that I did not get to see. Um, like the touristy, touristy things, like, you know, everyone like, you know, wants to go to like the Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame. But, you know, the pandemic has just kinda exacerbated 
everything. And I feel like it's definitely exacerbated, you know, the homeless crisis going on in LA and California in general. So my friend was just telling me like, yeah, let's not go to, you know, the Hollywood. It's not, it's kind of ratchet. It's not like, it's not what it's cracked up to be. And that's why uh, basically I went to LA as well, just to see if, you know, the hype, you know, I just wanted to see what the hype was about. So, and again, during my time, I also went to downtown LA and I told my friend I was there. I was like, yeah, I want to see the hood. I want to see, I want to see Compton. I want to go to Watts. I want to go to South Central. I want to go to Skid Row. It's like, not Skid Row. But, you know, again, I wanted to visit all these places. I want to do all these things, but it's just like LA is just so far spread out. And the thing about Skid Row is... And what we're going to get to get into with the cons or things that I just noticed that were kind of disturbing to me on the trip was, you know, of course, the homeless population and just the homelessness that goes on in L.A. It's very devastating to see. And it's a huge eyesore because it's just like, you know, L.A. has just made has just, you know, commodified itself into this beautiful luxury item that people you know travel across the world people travel across the country to come and live here and all for you to get here and there's like these thousands of people millions of people in this in the state alone who just don't have a place to live it's just very disheartening and it's not confusing because we all know that you know greed and capitalism and you know high costs of living just kind of breed homelessness and breed poverty and my friend was just telling me like you know in a lot of places there are you know hepatitis breakouts tuberculosis so a lot of unhygienic things that unfortunately unfold in these type of circumstances and another downside that you know comes with like I said the unsanitary issue you know it's it's dire it's huge so, you know, even in L.A. County or, you know, the nice places you may think, you know, you're going to walk around and it's going to smell like pee, uh, hard pee, like piss that been sitting for months, years. So and even my friend, he was just warning me while we were around traveling. He was just like, you know, be careful because you might step in shit. And I'm just like, wow, like, you know, it's major. So, you know, that's just a. That's just a factor to, you know, take into consideration when you are walking around or walking downtown. And I guess that's another reason why a lot of people don't walk in L.A. And along with unhygienic, you know, I noticed the skies, they definitely looked kind of funny in the smog. Like it was it was this blend of like, you know, regular natural clouds and then these brown kind of funny looking clouds and it kind of like messed up the visuals for me. Um, but it was also very sad to see just like this, these layers of dark clouds, small gas. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of scary to see. Not a con, but kind of a con is definitely how spread out LA is and how big it is in you know, it kind of sucks when you're not where you need to be and you need to go. You need to get there. That's like the most stressful part for me, in my opinion. So, yeah, L.A. is just really big. You know, I'm from a small city. So, you know, Los Angeles was very intimidating and, in, you know, in a sort of way. So maybe that's something that you if you're trying to travel there and maybe you have social anxiety uh, you know, definitely take into account because, you know, Los Angeles and California is like, you know, one of the most populated states. It's one of the biggest states and L.A. is one of the biggest cities since the pandemic. There have been a lot of people leaving L.A. because, you know, prices and cost of living. So, you know, definitely take that into consideration um, when traveling is that it's just huge. It's big out there. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of things. So not a con in my opinion, but definitely something to pay attention to, especially if you feel as though that that might negatively impact your, you know, safety or your comfortability out in social situations. So, yeah. 
And the last thing I want to talk about is food. Because I know when people do travel vlogs, they talk about food or do like dining and stuff like that. So my first, my second day I was out there, I went to this place called Earth Cafe. Oh my God, guys, the food was so good. The atmosphere was amazing. The service was great. Uh, the food, uh, the smoothies. It's just basically like these... Um, like kind of healthy cuisines, like tea bars kind of vibe. Uh, so yeah, I went to Earth Cafe and I also went to this like chicken joint called Dave's Hot Chicken, which is like kind of popular, which is basically popular in like uh, Cali. And I think they have a few locations in the South, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, Dave's Hot Chicken was amazing. I just got like a chicken sandwich. I don't have a picture of it. <laughs> But it was really, really good. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't really get to explore too much of, you know, being a foodie or going out to bars and stuff like that. Because, again, the pandemic kind of, you know, it did kind of change my plans. And that's what I think everyone should kind of take into consideration traveling to, you know, L.A. during the pandemic is you might not get the experience that you are looking for or that you think. Um and, you know, coming into coming into traveling to L.A., I kind of had in the back of my mind, like, wow, like I feel like traveling to L.A. maybe a couple years ago would have been a better experience. Not saying I didn't have a good time, but I definitely think that, you know, the situations that we're in right now definitely contributed to some things that might have been closed down, some things that weren't, you know, acceptable or what have you. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much the end of this vlog. Uh, please stay tuned, subscribe, like, all that. I do have more content coming. Uh, so yeah, please stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some of this information helpful, if not all. Uh, and if you didn't, that's okay. I love you anyway. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'm just sharing how my experience was. And of course, my experience is not the same as how other people's experience may be. So yeah, guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace out.